We begin this evening with increasingly alarming messaging from criminal defendant and GOP current frontrunner Donald J. Trump about what he wants to do if he wins a second term. Reports describe a potential second Trump administration focused on mass deportations, immigration raids, and a U.S. government filled with Trump loyalists ready to carry out his extreme policies. Trump's 2024 campaign responded to those reports, calling them, quote, purely speculative and theoretical. But this past Veterans Day, when millions of Americans honored those who sacrificed for our country, this is what we heard from the former president. We pledge to you that we will root out the communists, Marxists, fascists, and the radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country. The real threat is not from the radical right. The real threat is from the radical left. And it's growing every day, every single day. The threat from outside forces is far less sinister, dangerous, and grave than the threat from within. Our threat is from within. You want to get alarmed? The Washington Post accurately points out similar language was used by dictators, including Hitler and Mussolini. And one journalist who has covered Donald Trump extensively said Trump's words point to the theme of his upcoming 2024 campaign. They're embracing this idea. Uh, they're embracing the idea that they are out to get retribution against the deep state, against uh, the communists, the radicals, the rhinos, and the vermin. I mean, they're embracing this idea. Yeah. That is the theme yeah. of the campaign. I mean, it just is. And he's been proving it over the past two weeks. Even as Trump himself faces 91 felony counts, he is also battling the civil fraud case here in New York that could end his real estate business. Today, his legal team began their defense in that trial. Their first witness, Trump's eldest son, Donald Trump Jr. Nearly two weeks ago, he went under oath for the prosecution. Well, he is back. On the stand today, he reportedly praised his father's business, calling him a, quote, visionary. Of course, the former president, his company, and his sons, Don Jr. and Eric, are all defendants in this case. The Israeli defense minister said today that after 16 years in power, Hamas has lost control of Gaza. In a statement, the defense minister said Gazans have no faith in the Hamas regime and that the military mission is going, quote, according to plan. And in a photo that has been verified by NBC News, an IDF brigade was seen occupying the Palestinian parliament building in Gaza City. My colleague Keir Simmons has the latest. Tonight, after days of fighting around hospitals in northern Gaza and critical medical resources in short supply, bodies piled outside and deepening desperation inside. Here, a Palestinian doctor treating a patient with a cell phone light. President Biden calling for less intrusive action near hospitals. Uh, we're in contact and we're with, uh, with the Israelis. The hospital must be protected. Israel says Hamas is using hospitals for cover. They say this is a Hamas fighter with a rocket-propelled grenade at Al-Quds Hospital, a claim denied by doctors there. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians have fled south, but say they're still not safe. Look at the bodies this dad cries, women and more children killed. The European Union, like President Biden, imploring Israel to show maximum restraint while condemning Hamas for, it says, using hospitals and civilians as human shields. For more, let's bring in two people trying to make a difference. Sally Abed, a Standing Together staff member and elected national leader, and Alone Lee Green, national director and founder of the group Standing Together. Their group is mobilizing Jewish and Palestinian citizens with one goal peace. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for everything you're doing. Alonely, after the attack, your organization tried to do something that seems so simple, just putting up stickers, just messages of hope and unity, and they were torn down. How do you navigate that you're asking for the most basic thing and people don't want to hear it? 
Well, we are trying to um, put forward a message of humanity, a message of partnership, a message of Israeli-Palestinian peace. And we are saying to all those that don't like our message, that are calling us maybe traitors, that what we're doing is the most patriotic thing uh, possible in this reality, to demand Israeli-Palestinian peace, to demand the end of the occupation and the end of this status quo of wars again and again and again that does not bring us security and does not bring prosperity to the people, um, both in Palestine and in Israel. Sally, you are a Palestinian Israeli. What has this month been like for you? Well, Stephanie, this month ha has been extremely uh, hard on all of us uh, as part of Israeli society. And as a Palestinian, uh, uh, you know, uh, we are looking at yet another front of the war uh, within Israeli society where we are really witnessing uh, a very heavy political persecution on Palestinians within Israel. Uh, my identity, uh, my any kind of uh, expression of solidarity uh, with the Palestinians in Gaza has been criminalized, and really we are fighting, uh, as Aloni said, we are fighting over our humanity at the moment and really trying to hold the humanity of both peoples because we understand that if we are unable to do that, uh, we also won't be able to envision uh, a place where we actually can move forward from here. And when we talk about peace, it really is not a naive word to actually just talk about lovey-dovey peace, but the very deep understanding that we are at an intersection where we understand that the status quo that got us to this place, to this catastrophic trauma for both peoples, can no longer be sustained. And, could, and really controlling millions of people militarily for decades is just not sustainable. And we really need to move into a different direction. But Alonely, it, it's not that peace is lovey-dovey or the idea of it naive. We cannot forget that there was a ceasefire in place before Hamas's attack. And it is extremely difficult to negotiate with terrorists, which is what they are. What solution allows Israel to defend itself and at the same time protect Palestinian lives? Does that solution even exist right now? What does it look like? So we need to understand that this is not the first war uh, between Israel and Hamas. We are um, we had actually 16 military operations operations in the last decade and a half uh, between Israel and, and Gaza. And every time they promise us in our government that this time it's going to work, this time it's going to bring security to the Israeli um, people. And we say that the only way to achieve security, the only way to really defend the Israeli uh, people, both Palestinian citizens of Israel and Jewish citizens of Israel, is to break out of this status quo, of this paradigm that it's maintainable um, to put a blockade over Gaza to actually strengthen Hamas, because this is what the Israeli government has been doing for a decade and a half, and weakening the Palestinian Authority. So what we're saying is that we need a different paradigm, a paradigm where all people are free, where all people are equal, where people can live actually um, a good life, a secure life, a quiet life. And this does not happen when you have a government in our side that refuses to go to peace, that refuses to negotiate with the Palestinians, that refuses to um, put end to the settlements. Um, and we say that it's a very, very important thing to understand that whenever Israel destroys a full neighborhood in Gaza, whenever Israel uh, kills uh, a family of 30 people, it threatens Hamas. It makes them stronger because they're feeding on extremism. They're feeding on this terrible reality when people on both sides are just, you know, fed with hatred. And it's not bringing us security. Even this time, this war is not going to end with a better reality. Who's going to control the Gaza Strip? Israel is promising us that, you know, the IDF is going to conquer Gaza Strip and to have a second West Bank on Gaza. Is this going to bring us security? Sally, how much did Hamas's attack damage the real ambitions of the Palestinian people? Um, I really think that as, as Palestinian people um, uh, and really as a movement uh, of Palestinian liberation, we really need to recognize the very fact that Hamas is a catastrophic leadership for the Palestinian people and for the uh, prospects of peace and, and liberty and freedom of, of the Palestinians. Uh, and in, in many ways, this is a defining moment uh, for people. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, uh, people in, in Gaza have very little leverage 
to, to resist uh, uh, their own leadership right now. Uh, but we do have a responsibility as Palestinians within Israel, Palestinians in the West Bank, Palestinians in the diaspora, to actually take this moment and define what kind of resistance, what kind of movement do we want, what kind of justified struggle are we having for freedom and to end the occupation. And it is definitely not Hamas.